Hello and welcome to the garden. This is a positive review for growing Ajvarsky peppers in the Southwest Desert Garden. Um, if you're looking for the easiest, quickest answer, yes, absolutely grow this pepper. You won't regret it. Um, for those of you sticking around, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the flavor of this pepper and um, the growing conditions. I didn't find it a picky um, or difficult to grow plant, but I have formed some opinions about growing it based on having grown it in four distinct locations or microclimates, you could say, in my, in my garden. So just want to pass along a couple of potential tips if you want to hear those. But first, let's go take a look at this pepper in my garden. First, I'll show you some coverage from June. The camera's a little bit out of focus that day. I apologize for that. But I wanted to show you that that pepper back in June, when I first ate it, the first harvest, it was maybe five inches big and, and rounder. Um, than what's growing now in the garden in September. Here we are September 14th. So um, this is a second crop. They're still flavorful, still good, um, but they're smaller. So let me show you the two, two distinct sizes uh, throughout the growing season of this pepper. So now let's take a look at um, the second crop. Mid-September, how does the pepper look now? So during fall cleanup, one of the plants I decided to keep to see if I could get a second crop from were these Edgevarsky peppers. And I'm so glad I did because here they are. So quite a bit smaller than that initial five inches. This is the size of my thumb from tip until this part down here. Yay wide. Oh, there it goes. Don't pick them when they're green, by the way. This is a pepper that has very little flavor when it's green. You want to get them when they're red. Let's take a look at these ones back there. Those are almost ready. Those red ones. The ones that are turning red. I'm going to leave them a little bit longer and I'm going to pick them and eat them. I'll show you another couple plants. Here are a couple more, smaller than the one I just accidentally plucked off. There's two fingers for you, three. Oh, here's another one. Looks like when I planted these, I went about a foot apart from each other. And that seems to be working just fine as far as planting tips go. This one is turning red, still has some green on it. There it is in the sunshine, see a little better. Okay, let's talk flavor. It's interesting to talk about sweet peppers because at that point you're no, no longer talking about a scale, a heat scale, right? Sometimes when we talk about peppers, is, well, is it a seven? Is it a, is it a nine? Is it a, you know? Um, but man, when it comes to the mild or sweet peppers, then we have to start talking about the nuances of flavor. And that's exciting because then we have to try and figure out the vocabulary for, you know, how do I talk about this? So um, I'll first tell you that my favorite way to eat the Edgevarsky pepper was in fajitas. I often came out to the garden and anytime I saw a red pepper, uh, ready to be harvested. I was like, mmm, fajitas. That was the first thing I thought of because it just really, really brought out the flavor. Um, it was the flavor I was looking for um, for, for a fajita. So um, other ways to eat it, um, again, with an onion from the garden and sauteed up with eggs, 
Um, I also ate it one time on a Boca burger. Um, okay, so how about texture? Um, the, the texture is uh, crisp and a little bit juicy. I'm not talking like oodles of juice just flowing out of this thing, but it's not, it's not a dry pepper. It's, it's definitely got some crisp crunch to it and a little bit of juice. And then when you cook it up, you know sometimes how a pepper, um, you, you grilled it up and you're eating it and then you kind of go like this and take the skin off because like the slender thin skin is just coming off of the pepper when it's cooked and you're like, mm, not, not a fan of that texture. That doesn't happen with this pepper. The, the, the skin is thick enough and that it stays thick enough when it's cooked. And so you can just kind of eat the whole thing. Um, okay, and then back to flavor again. So I would call it sweet and deep and rich, miles beyond uh, your typical bell pepper from the grocery store. As far as sweet peppers go, I would say that those are um, lacking in flavor or a really mild flavor where this one would be more, more rich, more deep, Kind of like the difference between describing, uh, say, a Bonnie Best, which is a red slicer tomato, and you're like, oh, that's a good tomato, that's a tomato, tomato, tomato. But then you eat, say, a Paul Robeson or a um, Purple Cherokee or something like that, and you're going, whoa, that is rich. That's that's got some depth to it. Um, so that's, that's how I would compare maybe the difference between what we're getting in the grocery store with a bell, a sweet bell pepper, and growing this Edgevarsky um, at home as, uh, you know, I don't know. What else could you compare it to? The difference between a mild cheese and a sharp cheese. It's just like, oh, that's, that's good. So anyways, really, really flavorful, good, tasty pepper. And I like the texture. Okay, let's talk about um, growing it in the Southwest Desert Garden. Peppers generally do well uh, out here. Um, I grew it in four different areas of my yard. So I'm just gonna look around and give myself a, a good memory of what I wanted to talk about here. I grew this pepper in full sun in mostly sun but with some shade cast on it in mostly shade with a little sun cast on it and in full shade okay so then normally we might think well peppers tomatoes these things they want full sun but you got to keep in mind that in the desert we are getting full sunny days the majority of our growing season it is sunny and blue skies so much of the time that our full sun is quite a bit more than somebody else's full sun somewhere else. And so keeping that in mind, I'm going with um, casting a little bit of shade on our, uh, this pepper plant definitely responded to a little bit of shade cast on it. So the peppers I've just shown you behind me um, have a little bit of shade from the canopy of a tree that I'm standing under. Um, that's a uh, fruitless mulberry, but anyway, so they're gonna get some morning sun coming from this way, and they're gonna get some afternoon sun coming from this other way. And then a lot of the day, they're gonna be shaded and or dappled sunlight because it's, a, it's, not, a, it's not a canopy you know, of a cloth, it's, it's leaves, right? It's a tree. So, there's, so you can see the dappled sun back there. Um, so that's, that's where these peppers are growing. And you saw there's, Oh man, what, four to six peppers on each of those plants. Okay, so what was the experience of growing it in full sun? Um, it grew peppers, the plant grew nicely, it grew peppers, but then when we were going through the hottest parts of summer uh, with constant sun and hot, hot sun hitting those plants, um, they did get sunburnt or sun scalded, whatever you wanna call that, where the part of the pepper that is facing the sun uh, is turning yellow and thinning out and being damaged really. And yeah, you can still eat, you know, the other half of that pepper, but um, 
there's, there's not much product left when you're lopping off, you know, that whole damaged side. Um, mostly shade with a little bit of sun. I got one pepper off of that plant. So that's not my recommendation. And then full shade, absolutely full, fully shaded out pepper plant, um, no pepper. So if you can arrange, sorry, there's a hummingbird. If you can arrange for a little bit of shade on your pepper plant that doesn't crowd it out and shade it out completely, but does give it a reprieve from, from our hot sun, um, that yielded the best pep peppers, no sun scald, no, um, and, def and still a crop, you know, not shaded out so much that n nothing fruited. Those are my comments on flavor and tips on where in the garden to place this pepper. If you have any more questions about a Javarsky pepper that maybe I neglected to cover, please put them in the comments. Or if you grew this pepper yourself and you want to comment on the flavor, um, give us some more verbiage, some more words. You know, how do you describe this thing? It's, it's, um, uh, I just I love the taste I love the taste of it. my tongue I'm not even eating one my tongue is like mmm I remember I remember what the flavor is it tastes so good and it's um it's one of those that just makes the food that you're eating shine <sighs> trying to think if there's anything more I wanted to say about this pepper well anyways I leave it to you if there's more to talk about in the comments let me know um, Hope you try the Edgevarsky pepper. If you're into sweet peppers, I've moved a bit away from hot peppers just for the sake of my stomach. So finding good sweet peppers that um, that make a difference in the food that, that I'm eating has, has been something that I'm on the hunt for and um, I'm finding some really good ones this year. Um, so consider growing Edgevarsky pepper and uh, good luck in your garden. 